Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a mid-year curriculum review of everything that we've been using over the last like four-ish months. So if you enjoy this type of content and other homeschool content, remember to subscribe and let's get into it. Okay, so for my kids' individual curriculum, we've been using the good of the beautiful and we have been loving it. So first off, just with math, this is my oldest book. He's almost done with it though. And <laughs> I have the math six one already, so he'll just start with that one. We don't really, I don't just set it to the academic year for them to finish their curriculum if they're moving faster or slower. We just kind of go at their pace. And since he's kind of cruising through it and he started it, I think last summer, we're just gonna move on to math six when he gets there. And I have just been loving it. I <laughs> think it's so good. Some of the lessons are getting harder. And so sometimes it takes my older to my fifth and my fourth grader a little bit longer to finish their math. So if it is taking a super long time and it's, it's so like the other day, my son had a division lesson and division just can take a really long time to do when you have lots of problems. So he just did one page and then we saved the other page until the next day. And that still took like an hour for him to complete the lesson and the page. And so with my younger kids, my, what do I have? A second grader and a kindergartner, they can get through their math pretty quickly, like maybe 30 to 40 minutes at the most. My kindergartner's probably 20 minutes maybe. And you know, it's done for the day. But as they're getting a little bit older, it's taking a little longer, which is occasionally frustrating to them, but they're doing really well with it. I do like how these older ones, I don't think it starts in third grade, I think fourth and fifth, they have the little video lessons. And so this is mostly independent work from me, which is so nice when you're homeschooling tons of kids that are spanning different age ranges because everyone needs my help and I, I'm one person and I cannot help them all at the same time. So I like how there's the lessons and then I, these ones give you the answer books. So I could figure out the problems myself, but it's very quick for me just to use the answer book and go through and check and see if everything's good. So I usually do that and then go over anything that maybe they missed or that they didn't understand the problem completely or whatever it is, I'll go over it with them. So we've really been loving that and we're gonna keep using it. And then the language arts we've been using for a year. Math, I think from the good and the beautiful has been about a year and a half. But language arts, we started about a year ago. It was right after I had my baby and he is one. <laughs> and so we had started it. We started on level three, I think, with my older two kids. They're about at the same level in the language arts. And we had had so much like split up curriculum before that, you know, like separate thing for reading, separate for spelling, separate for grammar. And so they were kind of in a variety of spots because it wasn't all consistently you know, at the same level. So it's taken a little bit to try to catch them up or get them up to speed, maybe where they're supposed to, because like I said, they're in fifth and fourth grade right now. And so um, in January, it is January still. <laughs> so just a few weeks ago, when we started back after Christmas, we just started them on level four, even though we weren't quite done with level three, just because some of it was getting a little easy. So I just bumped them up and got them the level four. And this is more independent than the level three, and which has been really nice for me because they've been able to just do everything by themselves almost completely. Like there's a few spelling words I might have to read to them or some like reading ladders that I might have to go through them with, with them, whatever I just said. <laughs> but for the most part, they can just pull it out and do it themselves. And something that I've really liked about level four is that it has its own spelling and writing book. Like it's separate from the language arts book, which has been so nice because I feel like in level three, we had all the spelling words and we write them down. They'd sort of practice them, but it just wasn't super great. We weren't great at it. But having this, cause I think every other day, basically they either do a writing workshop in this book or they do practicing their spelling words. And I just feel like it's been much better for them. So I really like that. And I wanted to mention something about my kindergartner. We started her at, she was still kind of in the pre-K reading level at the beginning of the year. 
and we're we moved into the kindergarten book <laughs> but it's been a little bit of a struggle so with math she's already on first grade math okay she gets it she's just cruising through it and it's a lot of fun for her reading is another beast my older daughter also struggled a little bit like had a harder time with picking up reading she eventually did and now reads like a crazy person very very thick books and so i feel like it's important to remember they go at their own pace and if we push them too quickly we can still push them but if we push them too quickly then it's just frustrating for everyone and nobody ever really learns what's going on and they don't want to read they don't like it so we did parts of this book this is the old level k they have an updated one and she, the blending sounds was just super hard. So this last week we went back <laughs> to teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons. And this has worked well for a lot of my other kids. So we simplified. When my older daughter was having struggles, we simplified and then she took off with her reading. And so we have simplified and then we will move back to this. Even if in first grade she's still in this, that it's not important. You know, the important thing is that she's learning and so that's kind of where we are. I still love this book. I think it's really good for the good and the beautiful, but it just was not working for her right now. And so those are, are their individual subjects and that's kind of what we're doing for that. And everything has been working really well. I love seeing their progress and I'm very happy with where we are with all the individual subjects. Okay, then three out of my five kids, because <laughs> the fifth one's baby, <laughs> are doing language classes. So my two middle kids, a boy and a girl that are in second and fourth grade, are doing um, the Homeschool Spanish Academy. So once a week they do an online lesson for 30 minutes with a native speaker. And I believe I still have a link for them, so I'll put it down in the description where you can get one free class to kind of try it out if you want to see how it works. And you can do up to three classes a week if you want to do that. And it's also great for um, like high school or junior high school as well. And you can do longer classes, like they have 45 minutes, I think, or up to an hour, I don't remember for sure. So if you wanted to check out those, if you have older kids, I think it would be great. But my kids are really <laughs> learning a lot. My daughter is even being sassy in Spanish towards me, and I can't completely understand most of what she says. My husband's the one that speaks Spanish, but my husband's like, I love the bil bilingual sass going on here. <laughs> so even though she's being sassy, she's saying it in Spanish, so she's practicing. So they're getting really good, and then they'll mix like their vocab. Sometimes when they see things, they'll say it in Spanish instead of English. So I feel like it's going really well and we'll get like little homework assignments or vocab they can practice. And then it is extremely helpful that my husband already knows Spanish. I feel like that's an important part of it that someone at least knows some Spanish, even if it's not in your immediate family, maybe you have friends, someone they could practice with, I think is very important because he practices like two times a week with them outside of their class and then they get to speak with this native speaker and it's just been a really good experience. And then my oldest son, who just turned 11, has been doing Japanese. He's mostly been practicing just with my husband. We did talk box mom for Japanese, but then they also just been practicing on their own. My husband <laughs> knows lots of languages <laughs> or a little bit of lots of languages and some of them he's fluent in. And so he knows some Japanese. And so he's been practicing with him. But we just started doing some out school classes last, like a couple weeks ago, I think he's had two classes. And it seems to be going pretty well. Like to have someone that speaks the language fluently has been a good experience for him. He seems to be excited about it. So that's kind of where we're going with his Japanese and that's been going pretty well. Okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna go over is all of our group work kind of subjects. And of course we do scripture time together and that's been going well. We went through the Old Testament last year for our church. We do from like January to December type study. And so this January right now, we just started the New Testament. And so we've been going through that. And so far it's been going well and we've been learning a lot and having a good time with that. And then we've been doing some science. We finished the Sassafras Science Zoology. And I really like the Sassafras Science. There is so many activities. 
that it could be overwhelming. Obviously you don't have to do all the things, but there's a lot of information in this book and there's ways to do it if you're only doing science twice a week or if you're doing it five days a week, I think is the other option and what you could do on each day. We just do science two days a week because we rotate between history. And I have really enjoyed this. The readers are the really fun part. They're the part my kids really like. And it goes through and it introduces the different animals in different ways. And then there's a workbook. If you wanna go through that, we would write about the different animals on the whiteboard and my kids would write them down in their notebooks. And it was a good experience. I am hoping, probably not till fall, we'll try to get through some of the Good and the Beautifuls science curriculum because I have a bunch of them and I really, really like their curriculum. They keep it very simple, but um, we're gonna be doing the anatomy section for this because when I bought them, they come, you know, as a pair, they should only take like half of the year. And so we just started doing the anatomy one and we'll see if we can bring in some of the other good and the beautiful ones. It's always hard just depending on how much time it takes us in the morning to get through everything, whether or not we have time to add in another science curriculum, you know, for a few weeks. So we'll see, I want to really get through a few of them just like the maturation and stuff because I have some kids that are moving into that area of their lives <laughs> and so it'd be good to talk about those things but so far I really like these these are from elemental science and they have tons of different books you I think it does a pretty good job explaining at the beginning of this book what's going on so I think you could start with different books you wouldn't necessarily have to start at book one because I think they have some for three or four years that you could be going through them so that's kind of where we are with our science and then with history we're doing the good and the beautifuls level one and we're almost done with this so we'll see if we start level two before the end of the school year and i do like it there's times where i feel like it's a little bit above where my kids are right now <laughs> and so i will skip things and it does have in here like if your kids are younger than this age group you probably shouldn't do this chapter. It just might be too hard or too uh, like sensitive. So I do appreciate that. But there are other things where I'm just like, do they even understand what's going on? Do I even understand <laughs> what's going on? You know, history is just complex. There's a lot of information. And so it's kind of hard. I do like how the lessons are short and they do have some recordings for some of the lessons. It's not every lesson. And those are some of my kids' favorite parts. They like listening to the recordings. We'll put them on the speaker and they can work on like their handwriting or something and listen to a recording about history. And so that's something that they really do enjoy. And then they have these stories in here as well. And then they have the read alouds that go with this. So we have made it through two of them and we're on the third one because we're in the like third section of this. And so this is the one we're reading currently, and that is kind of colonial times. We started with The Boy of the Pyramids, and my kids really, really enjoyed this book. They were like, wait, we gotta finish the book. And then The Saracen Steed, so this is medieval times. And this was a good one too, the, a fun one to read. And we have one more, I think that's more like World War One or two-ish for the last section of the history. And then the only other like read aloud that we got through, we started it last year. It, and then, you know, like a, a whole other like school year ago, <laughs> not just like in the fall, it was like a year ago <laughs> that we started this. And then we finished it several months ago, but is PAX. And I think there's another one, but this was recommended by a friend that also homeschools and we, it was a really good book. There's a lot of good discussion things in here about different like animals and war and just sensitive things about death and all sorts of things. So there's a range of topics if you want something as a discussion book. And so this is all we've gotten through. I always have ambition to have like to do more read alouds. But then, first of all, like, how do you guys read for so long? <laughs> you know, between all these read alouds and doing our group work, you know, that's almost an hour of me talking. You know, we're interacting in some ways. But then when I'm just reading books, that's a long time to read. <laughs> it hurts my throat. So I'm like, how, 
how do you guys read so much? I don't know how you do it because it just kills my throat to read it that much. And so we haven't made it through more. And recently our group work has just been shortened quite a bit because of a bunch of stuff going on. And so we're, we're working back up to an hour and hopefully getting back to an extra read aloud is something that's a little bit more fun or that we can just discuss separately from our history and science curriculum. Okay, so that's how everything is going right now the, with our curriculum, what we're loving, like most of it's what we're loving. There is not very much that I don't love about how everything's going. It's just, we're like in a good groove right now with school. And so I'll make sure to try to like link all this stuff down below if you wanna check it out. Please link, link, you don't have to link it, but <laughs> comment down below what curriculum you're loving right now. Something that's just working super well for your family, I would love to hear. And remember to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time.